What's up, what's up, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we are gonna be doing our first follow along workout of 2019. Like you can already see how excited I am. Not too long ago, I asked you guys what your number one goals were for 2019. And I got a bunch of different answers, but a lot of them were along the lines of building a booty, shrinking your waist, getting abs, gaining weight, losing weight, building muscle, burning fat. Like they kind of followed similar themes. So while I definitely plan to address all of these as we kind of go through the new year and over the course of the next few videos, I wanted to kind of take a step back and focus on something that I think is important regardless of what your specific goals are for 2019. And that's habits. Making a habit of going to the gym, prioritizing your workouts, consistently doing the things that you know are gonna move you closer to your goals. Because as cool as it is to like a YouTube workout here and there's some random other YouTube workout there, then maybe like an Instagram swipey workout over here, that's fun and that's cool and all. But what's actually gonna get you results is if you make a routine that you can stick to over time. So the plan for today is to take you through a full body workout that you can repeat two to three times throughout the week. And that's actually one of the things that I do love about full body workouts. If you do a full body workout two or three times throughout the week and you don't get like anything done outside of that, you're still hitting all of your major muscle groups multiple times during that week. Start with the two to three days a week. Once you make a habit of that, once you get into a good routine, then build from there. If you wanna add like a booty day or if you wanna add an arm day, you can do that to give those body parts a little bit of extra attention. But full body workouts are a great starting point and a great way to build a foundation for a continuing lifelong habit of going to the gym and working out. Before we get to the workout, I wanna thank Audible for sponsoring this video. If you like the follow along workout format, but you don't really wanna be looking at your phone screen the entire time you're at the gym, Gym. They have audio books, they have audio shows, news, comedy, as well as new audio fitness programs you can all listen to on the go. I just started listening to The Subtle Art of Not Giving a and I have to say that it has been really helping with my day-to-day -day mindset as well as the entire way that I'm kind of approaching social media in 2019. So if you wanna try out Audible for yourself, if you wanna grab that book as well, then go to www.audible.com slash Abby Pollock or text Abby Pollock to 500500 and you can get a free 30-day trial of Audible as well as a free book of your choice. All right, y'all, we are getting bold and daring today and we are filming this workout at a commercial gym. So I'm gonna be real up close and personal with you on the camera, but our first exercise for today is the dumbbell split squat. So here you're gonna notice I'm holding the dumbbell a little bit differently from usual. Instead of having one dumbbell in each hand and my hands hanging by my sides, I've got one dumbbell that I'm holding up close to my chest, kind of as you would with a goblet squat. Both grips are gonna work, but I like this one better for beginners as it forces you to keep your core tight and shoulders back. It also promotes a more upright posture which may feel more comfortable as you near that bottom end range of motion. For the second set of each exercise, I'm going to go over the at-home variation. One of the most common complaints I hear about single leg exercises is that you can't feel your glutes or really any of the muscles you think you're supposed to be feeling. This is completely normal and is usually due to a lack of balance. So it's for this reason that I like the wall supported version as it gives you a little bit more stability, a little bit more balance, and you can just focus on proper form and feeling this exercise where you're supposed to be feeling it. All right, you done picking your nose? Yeah, I'm done. I just, you know, there were things up here and you can't have things in your nose when you're trying to focus on the set. Cause like, can't get PRs out here, not really, but you know. Before I move on to the next exercise, one thing I want to touch on is bench setup. In general, I recommend a bench right around knee height. If the bench is too low, you risk putting more weight on the non-working leg, whereas if the bench is too high, this may extend your non-working hip beyond its comfortable range of motion, and in your body's effort to counteract this, you will end up flexing it through the non-working leg. If you don't have a bench that's near knee height, most commercial gyms have adjustable aerobic steps in the group exercise room, so just grab one of those and adjust the risers until the right height. Come on. 
Get it. Can do it. Drugs. Three more. No, can't play on that exercise. Yeah, so. Know this. Moving on to our next exercise. I'm gonna adjust this bench up. We are not going anywhere because I don't wanna bother anyone at the gym. We're gonna adjust this bench up so we can do some dumbbell bent over rows. Bent over rows. So something you might notice is that rather than just yanking the weight straight up, I'm drawing it back in a more arc-like motion. I explain the science behind this in a back workout that I'll link down below, but the idea is that by pulling back in this way, you should feel better engagement through your back muscles rather than your arms or biceps. If you want to make this version of the bent over row even more challenging, you can drop the bench height down and move your torso closer to horizontal. This will extend the range of motion and allow you to get an even better squeeze at the top. How was that? Honestly, I think I could go heavier. I might grab the next weight up, so I could be like 25. Okay. For our at-home version of this exercise, we've got the pause renegade row. Here, we're getting into a hand plank position, pulling our core in tight, then one arm at a time, rowing up and back in that same type of arcing movement we did with the weights. At the top of each rep, hold for a pause and focus on squeezing your arm in and back before controlling its lower back down to the ground. What did you just do? That's a rough set, man. Yeah, so what happened? Do you want to tell me? I really them? ambitious with my weight, and then I just kind of like yanked it up on the first rep, and I fully smoked my hip. It's kind of like stinging right now. It's like it fell asleep and it's waking back up, but I think it's definitely going to bruise. All right, good job. All right, so for my last set, I'm going to stick with the 30 pounds because my last set with that didn't go fantastically. We're just going to finish, finish out this exercise with that weight. Like your ancestors did. Your ancestors did it? You can too. That's right, it's like you're irritating. Oh! For our next exercise, we have the dumbbell Romanian deadlift with the side of pissing Jeff off because I think we've reached that point in the workout where he is fed up with filming. So if you're enjoying this video, make sure you shoot us a thumbs up because I'm gonna show that to Jeff so he keeps filming these workouts for you. Dumbbell Romanian deadlift. So there's two main ways of doing this exercise with dumbbells. You can either use a single dumbbell that lowers straight down between your legs or two dumbbells as I'm using here. I like both variations, but I find this one better for crossing over to good form with a barbell as it keeps your shoulders back and the shape of the dumbbells guides you down in a relatively straight up and down path with the weight. So what is this, Abby? I Yeah, you're probably not going to, though. In what universe is that fucking twerking? Oh my god, you are so stiff. For this next set, I'm not gonna twerk, but I am gonna up my weight to 30 pounds, because on the last set, I felt it, but I feel like it could go a little bit heavier. Just gonna yell on this one. Yep. For our at-home variation of this exercise, we've got the wall hip hinge. This is essentially a Romanian deadlift, but with the wall as a guide to sit your hips back. Because similar to the split squat, one of the most common struggles I see here is balance and really getting comfortable sitting your hips back to initiate the movement. A lot of people will compensate by either slumping their shoulders forward, reaching for the ground, or bending their knees to lower down. 
That's why I like this exercise, because even if your balance isn't great, even if you're just starting, the wall will prevent you from falling back. Just make sure that you're standing far enough away to feel a good stretch in your hams and glutes at the bottom of the range of motion. First thing here, dumbbell versus barbell overhead press. Which one should you do? Because the barbell is all one piece and you're providing support from more than one point, aka you're holding it in both hands, this is a much more stable exercise. And that means you can load heavier weight and really focus on strength with this one. Whereas with the dumbbell variation, this is a less stable exercise. So while you can't load as much weight, it will end up using more of your shoulder musculature to support. Seeing a little bit of the bit of the story eyes right now, but I'm feeling good at this weight, so I think we're gonna stick with this and we're gonna set two. I made my arms short, chased the neighborhood cats. You done? Growled and I roared. For our at-home version of this exercise, we'll be doing the down dog push-up. As compared to lower body training, upper body exercises are quite a bit trickier to adapt because most of them aren't body weight bearing and they rather rely on external weight for difficulty. So here we're shifting the emphasis of a push-up more to your shoulders by adjusting the angle of your body. If you're stronger, shift your weight more forward so your hips are closer to overhead. Whereas if you're still building up strength, keep your weight more back so your hips are further away from your head. I guess that's why it's a dumbbell. <laughs> Final exercise. Let's talk dumbbell versus barbell hip thrust. If you're an intermediate to advanced lifter and building muscle is your goal, barbell hip thrust should probably be your go-to. They're much easier to load and there's no huge dumbbell hindering your range of motion. That said, if you train at a busy gym, don't have a barbell pad, or you're just short on time, the dumbbell hip thrust can be helpful. The dumbbells at my gym have very large but thin ends, so I had to kind of balance them on my inner thigh fat muscle area, which was weird, but eventually ended up working. So the hip thrust is an inherently uncomfortable exercise, whether you use a barbell or a dumbbell, like it's gonna be uncomfortable. You're just kind of shifting where the discomfort is. This one though, I feel like I did better. I feel like I got a little bit more comfortable than last time. I'm not gonna up the weight because I don't even know if the dumbbell would fit on me. That is one of the issues with the dumbbell version of this exercise. For our at-home version of this exercise, we'll be doing a plain old glute bridge. If you have a couch or chair to use as a bench, you can definitely switch this to a hip thrust, but I was planning for the bare minimum equipment. Now the key to making this exercise challenging with just body weight is to move slow and controlled, paying attention to your hip position, then holding for a pause at the top. Your goal is to keep your hips and as a result your low back as close to neutral as possible then if you can, tuck them forward for a strong glute squeeze at the top. Are you ready for the level 9,000 setup for this? I'm gonna assume you said yes. So Jeff, how am I supposed to squat into this? Well, you were supposed to have already done the squat. That would be the way you picked up the dumbbell would have been the squat. <gasps>
maybe I just made it, maybe you're just at the end of the video. But we're here now, so if you enjoyed this workout, make sure you shoot me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and if you're interested in trying out Audible, if you want to grab that free trial, I will put all of that info down in the description box below. That's perfect for if you like the follow along workout format, but maybe you don't want like the video or to be checking your screen or your phone the whole time at the gym. It's kind of handy for that. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.